You know, this year we have genuinely been spoiled when it comes to video game releases. Like, it has truly been a banger of a year. Dare I say a banger of a couple years. Two years of bangers of video game releases. And especially this past six months, it just seems like my stockpile of games that I'm actively playing. Not just games that are sitting in my backlog that I'm actively playing uh, continues to grow. And yesterday... I added another one of those games to my active play rotation, that game being Witchfire, developed by Astronauts, an independent Polish uh, developer made up of X people can fly developers. Uh, you may be familiar with the studio as they released back in 2014, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. But yeah, I mean, Vanishing of Ethan Carter is a really cool game, but it's kind of a far cry from what the devs were known for when they were at People Can Fly, which of course was like Bulletstorm and Painkiller for a very long time. Uh, I feel like they're kind of tapping back into that part of their history with Witchfire, which is a game that we've been able to follow the development of for quite some time now. In fact, if you're interested in that sort of thing, I'm going to have a link to the Astronauts devlog below because uh, it's actually really fascinating. They documented a lot of this game's development, uh, the sort of difficulties had. They even talked pretty openly about some of the big milestones where they realized they needed to sort of shift things in a different direction. And it was really fascinating to follow as someone who has been excited for this game since its original reveal. But it's now here in early access for the moment exclusively on the Epic Game Store. They're planning to do early access for about a year, maybe a few more months. And then I imagine we'll see the game come to Steam as well, as is the case with those deals usually. It is $39.99, and let's just kind of get into it. There's a bunch of cool stuff here in our base, but we're actually going to save that for after we just go out and do a run. I'm trying to think about the best way to structure a live commentary like this, and yeah, we could sit here and just go on and on about all of the uh, the sort of you know meta progression systems, as this game is a bit of a roguelite, or roguelite if you will. But I feel like we should just get out into an expedition, shoot some stuff, probably die because this game's actually relatively difficult and hard to play while talking. So if I go silent, you'll know it's because I'm focusing and trying not to die. But this is a map based uh, sort of expedition based video game <laughs> um it has like extraction shooter vibes in that we can go out into these maps to complete objectives and take down one sort of key objective on each map and then we can go to a portal and attempt to extract come back here save some of our equipment uh use it to level up and some other stuff we'll talk about later on in the early access version there are currently two environments we've got scarlet coast and then once we've dealt with the witch's familiar in scarlet coast we'll be able to, go to iron gate castle uh which mountain i think is kind of going to be what's going on next but you can see that there's some other areas and i imagine this is going to kind of be the general structure of the game as it expands to early access so let's go ahead and jump into scarlet coast we're going to see uh, some things here including our main objective which is to kill the witch's familiar or we can just acquire resources and escape back to the hermitorium which is where we are now our little safe haven our current witch fire at risk this is uh, basically like a souls like resource uh, we acquire it we can extract with it and use it to level up uh, we have our healing elixirs which are things that can actually be crafted you can take a fixed amount out on each expedition depending on your level and some other variables so right now i have two healing elixirs and you can see that we have two active research in our workshop again something we'll talk about later on let's just go ahead and jump in here because then we're going to very quickly be able to open up our map uh one thing i would like to point out is this game has some like fucking stellar just ui design interface design map design all of this shit looks so good uh it's making me curse uh but i genuinely love what they've done here it's just so pretty man the sort of stained you know colored map design and then even when we go to the ui oh it's so good man it's so good it just it just oozes oozes with uh some some wonderful vibes God, yeah i i love it um all right so we're here uh, we should open up the map again, as I said. So I, I have been on this map for quite some time now. I, like I said, I've played like four plus hours of the game. I have an idea of how things work. Uh, that being said, every time you level up in this game, you also uh, start to progress the witch's powers. So the witch will add new threats, new things to the environment that you'll have to deal with. And I'm seeing some of these right now, and that looks like we've got a new type of protective device that I am unfamiliar with. I'm familiar with these down yonder these are like these nasty poison things that really really mess you up uh these i'm not so sure but looking around the map you can see we also have 
essentially danger zones. Uh, and depending on how nasty the skull looks, very iconic and classic way to do your danger difficulty. No doubt inspired by uh, you know games like Destiny, as the devs have been very open that some of the elements of this game are very much influenced by Destiny as they find the gunplay of that game to be incredible, and I could not agree more. Uh, but we've got an extremely dangerous area up here. We've got a highly dangerous. We have a uh, portal that we can attempt to wake up and extract from. And then way up here, we have the Witch's First Familiar. Uh, it, it, we're not probably going to do that right now, but we're going to roll around and try and shoot and have a bit of fun. Uh, I've got two weapons currently in my inventory, my revolver as well as a long-range option. This is actually a good mushroom. There are a lot of things in the environment, uh, mushroom-wise, uh, that you can interact with. Uh, a lot of them are bad, though. There's bad mushrooms here. There's some good mushrooms, there's some bad mushrooms, and that's really what you need to know. Let me double-check this map one more time. I want to get into an engagement, so I think we're going to head down over to the shore there so we can you know, start to get into the gunplay. So this game uh, has a sprint mechanic. Uh, this is a bad mushroom. We have a dash mechanic. And you'll notice if you look to the bottom left corner above our health bar there, there is a stamina meter that drains when we do these things. This game is very stamina focused. Running out of stamina being like totally devoid of stamina is a very bad thing. Uh, it takes a long time for your stamina to regen if you run yourself dry. And you just don't want that to happen because you need stamina to dodge things like this guy's shot. Uh, and here we go. Okay, so this is kind of what happens when you go in and initiate these zones. Uh, more enemies are going to be summoned, and clearing out the wave is going to give us a chance to get a large Witchfire Crystal, which we can use to get an in-run buff. So we want to do that. It's also going to allow us to farm some actual Witchfire, and killing enemies uh, with any of our weapons is also going to help us progress the Mysteriums on our weapons, which are hidden traits that we unlock as we actively complete tasks. Uh, starts off pretty simple, it's just get kills, and they do eventually add like an additional objective for the second tier, and then the third tier. And then there's also a resource that you have to research in order to level those traits up and get access to additional components in them. We can actually stop for a second here and take a quick look at this if we go over to our prayer tab. You notice that my hand cannon, the hunger, actually has two traits. So my first one is reloading grants one charge bullet for each critical hit before the reload, and then charge bullets deal increased damage. This actually has a really cool effect, and if you keep an eye out while I'm using this uh, hunger, the sort of red cross on the bullets will turn blue when they are charged. Uh, the second tier allows for more critical hits. Bef sorry, the more critical hits I do before reload, the more powerful each charge bullet will be after. And then you can see I'm currently working on the final tier here, the final power. I need to kill 190 enemies. I need to complete second Mysterium actions. And then I need to research a third Mysterium incantation. Uh, and again, same thing you can see here with my all-seeing eye, the bolt action, it also has something similar. Our spells also have a similar thing, uh, but... In the case of spells, it seems like your power is just directly increased. These guys are pretty, uh, pretty, pretty nasty. So we're gonna be careful here. Landing headshots in this game is very important. Uh, just critical shots in general do more damage. Uh, and you wanna do more damage, because if not, you can be shooting things for a very, very long time. And you do not have infinite ammo. Ammo has to be looted in the environment. So if you look at the map, you will find specific locations where there are ammo chests. And acquiring those chests will gain you access to some extra stuff. What, what what happened here? Is this... Okay, this is probably a part of the protection. Yeah, these guys do this this fun leap thing at you. Oh, I, you know, I should have uh, saw the indicator on the side of my screen. This game actually has some really good... Like, additional awareness and visibility options. So instead of it just being, like, all sound focused, you can turn on a feature that allows indicators at the center of your screen or at the edge of your screen to tell you I should probably have reloaded this a long time ago to tell you what direction an attack is coming from and it really allows you to feel like super powerful like yeah I'm this badass witch hunter uh, so this is the crystal that I mentioned let's go ahead and pick this thing up Crystals uh, pull from a pool of arcana. Uh, you can actually research into arcana to expand this pool basically to get more perks in it uh, so we've got a couple options here one in Vario, one in Firearms uh, weapon damage is inversely related to health. Okay. <laughs> Increased chance for a killing enemy to drop a healing elixir. Hmm. 
you know, we're just gonna go with this one. Uh, I I don't like feel too bad about my health pool in general. I'm I'm getting much better at the game, so I, I'm not too stressed about that. If I get myself like totally overwhelmed, then yeah, I'm I'm probably screwed anyway. But that's that's more so on me. So let's take a look at our map again here. Uh, we do have an ammo chest back this way. We didn't really burn that much ammo, but we might as well consider grabbing it while we're here. The thing I'm not entirely sure of just yet. I'm trying to figure out what sort of actions basically perturb the witch. The witch is really built like this, uh, this you know, this realistic entity that is constantly sort of watching you and stalking you. They're well aware of your presence. They know you're immortal, so they're not necessarily interested in just killing you, but they they want to make you feel like you you suck. You know, like there's no way in hell you could. Oh, this is a bad thing. Uh, like you could potentially, like you could kill this witch. You know, it gets you to give up. And so every time you uh, engage in actions, get kills, or start to do really well, the witch is going to counter that up to the point where they will start to spawn uh, calamities, which are these nasty things you have to hunt down on the map and destroy, uh, lest they just continue to assault you with waves of undead. Uh, yeah, it's rough. I think this guy knows about me, or at least he's on a little patrol. This dude over here, if we look on our map, we can fortunately see the Warden of the Dead. The Warden of the Dead... Is bad. You don't want to go after the Warden of the Dead. I don't know how to kill this guy yet. I just know that he roams around, and if he tags you with that light, you're going to be in a really bad way. Oh, which I I think maybe I might have alerted him? Uh, I think I'm okay. I think that's just like a regular wave spawning us. I don't know. I'm a little concerned, but... We do need to kind of decide... Uh, I'm, I'm playing a little bit more aimlessly, uh, honestly, than I normally would. I think a big thing about this game that I've learned in the last four hours is that you really want to plan your route out, and figure out where you're going to go, what you're going to hit. I think we should probably just sweep back through and make our way to the portal. I'd like to attempt, uh, you know, an extraction to kind of show you guys how that works. So let's head out. Along the way, why don't we talk a little bit about how uh, firearms work in this game. I know we've been shooting a bunch of stuff, but there's an important thing to know about the different... Uh, firearms in their different optimal ranges. So if we open our inventory really quick and go to our prayer, uh, we can go ahead and inspect this weapon and we'll see that it has a hip fire range of 10 meters and an ADS range of 14 meters. Now ADSing in this game doesn't increase the accuracy of the weapon. It doesn't like lower the spread or anything like that. It just gives you that additional uh, range capability. And that is important because these ranges are like, they're pretty precise. The fall off past 10 meters in hip fire or 14 meters in ADS range is really steep, like the damage fall off. So you wanna be optim <laughs> you want to be optimizing your engagement distances, I guess is the best way to say it to really get the most out of a weapon. I think that's the thing that I saw in some of the early gameplay previews was a lot of people trying to like literally snipe with this revolver. And uh, it's just not built for that. It doesn't have the range, which is why, you know, getting uh, a sniper rifle was sort of my first, my first goal. You know, it's early guys. I spent the morning fixing my bathroom tub drain and my aim is really bad. That's my excuse, I'm sticking to it. These barrels are great for killing things. I'm not taking my own advice. Uh, but let let it be known that um, that fire will seriously, seriously mess you up. Don't stand in it. Just don't do it. Save yourself the trouble. I have not gotten any crits here, which is uh, not good. I need to be landing. Oh, these guys are fun. These guys have some pretty nasty traps they throw at you. And... Uh, We've got we've got some fun things over here, man. This is a whole group of fun folks. Holy smokes! I think we also have an armored. Okay. So again, uh, as I was saying, <laughs> as you level up in this game, the witch sort of adds more things to the map, I guess, if you will. Uh, new events appear, new enemies are added to her roster, and one of the ones I've recently ran into here is our uh, our good friend, the Armored, who we're going to see in a second. Not actually particularly hard to take down if you can get some really good charge shots on them, but a threat nonetheless. We got some standard ammo off that body. That's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and use some magic here. This is pretty awesome ability. So I actually spawn a bell. Um, on spawn, that thing is going to stun the enemies for a second. And then more importantly, I can shoot it again and stagger them again. Staggering enemies in this game is, like, really good. Um, 
I can't quite tell if there's a mechanic behind them taking more damage when they're staggered. It sure feels that way, but at the very least, they're not moving. It makes it easier to hit headshots on them. You can close in and get to your optimal range. We've got an archer somewhere. I can hear them. This guy is staggered. There we go. And, uh, you know, it kind of lets you control the group. Uh, these these groups of enemies can get so large sometimes in this game, too, especially if you're dealing with a calamity. Uh, it is... Whew, it gets spicy, all right? It genuinely does. Um, death will not consume any witch fire. That seems like a pretty one to ha good to have here, uh, considering I'm recording a commentary, and I would like to just kind of be able to send it and show you guys some stuff and then not lose our witch fire. So, again, uh, I, I don't think I talked too much about this, but you can see our witch fire in the bottom right corner above our ammo counter there right next to the little skull. Witch fire is... What? what? Oh, he's behind us. The arrow is behind us. What is this guy? What? All right, well, we spawned a wave in there. This is an open chest. We don't need a key for that, so we're definitely going to loot it, get a little bit of witch fire out of it. Not bad. I'm going to go ahead and make my way up here, get some high ground. Do, do, do. I won't do the meme. I won't do the meme. Um, i kind of just looking around. You know, as trees, trees having a rough day. Uh, there's our portal, where we could technically leave from. This is a highly dangerous area, so... Oh, we cleared it, though. Okay. Yeah, see, certain enemies are just like... Uh, I think that's going to be one of the fun sort of subjective things about the game is some enemy types are just going to be harder for you to deal with on a personal level. I do have a lot of keys, so I could open this. I'm going to do that. Get a white raven's feather, which is going to be a good resource uh, for Arcana stuff. Look at all these. Look at all these dudes. What are these nerds doing? Oh, oh they got a big guy with them. All right, here we go. It's, uh, so this is the light version of my spell. I have a light and a heavy right now of this uh, first spell. So that heavy one is also stun-based like this light one is, but obviously being able to shoot that bell allows me to control a larger area for a longer period of time. Uh, there is a melee in this game, and it's it's honestly not bad. I don't know if we'll be able to empower it eventually. Uh, and I haven't seen something about it. I've just missed out on that yet. But it's 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 not bad. It's just being in melee range uh, requires you to be really familiar with the with the melee attacks of the enemies. I'm gonna make a push here. Deal with this guy. We've got a couple big dudes. I definitely want to go ahead and pop this. Um, God, the game's gunplay feels so fucking good, though. It is it is a deeply satisfying uh, game to play. Um, and I think... Uh, I'm not trying to say that I'm some, like, cracked aim god, but um, as you can see right there, I'm definitely not. <laughs> Shooting in this game is, uh, is, is not, like, super difficult, um, but when you start playing, you're, you're gonna miss a bunch. Ooh, elemental fire rate. Uh... Element, wait, killing an enemy affected by an elemental magic temporarily boosts RPM of all weapons. Oh, it seems kind of interesting, but not really what I'm looking for. I would definitely prefer the double light spell charge right now. Um, you can go back and actually unlock ones from previous tiers that appeared, but it does require you to use those feathers that we've collected. And you can see we can also reroll using those feathers, but I'm kind of fine with this. My light spell is good. Again, I like stunning people in this game. It's, it's strong. <laughs> I'm totally in for it. Uh, so that's fine with me. Uh, but as I was saying, yeah, the game definitely requires a bit of mastery on the shooting front. Um, hitting headshots is important, and, you know, optimizing those ranges is important. Hipfire, though, feels really good in this game. To just, like, bam, 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 rip off some heads with hipfire is really fun. Uh, looks like we got an ammo chest up there. How am I doing? We're, like, we're doing okay. Whoop. Oh, you know what? Oh, no, it is up here. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was, like, up, up. We'll take this. Because there's a good chance as well. We're going to get a supply key, some demonic ammo. So demonic ammo is specifically for demonic weapons. This is a type of weapon you can research that only uses demonic ammo, which is considered quite rare. Um, we want to turn around and actually go by the other way. I have not researched one just yet. My kind of mindset is to research a, uh, a you know a mid-range like the revolver like I already started with a long range and then I want to try and get my hands on a shotgun. The thing is when you research you're researching into like an archetype you're not guaranteed to get one specific weapon like just because oh the warden's here 
Um, just because you research into close range doesn't mean you're going to get a shotgun. There's also like a machine pistol you can get, which I uh, was not a particularly large fan of. I'm kind of curious, like, how... Can I hide like this? <laughs> I honestly have just been like, oh yeah, I'm running. Okay, I think we're okay. As long as we don't engage it and don't get caught in the light. Oh, I actually dashed into it. We're okay, we're okay, we're okay, we're okay. Okay, we're getting out of here. Oh, it's definitely not happy. Um, again, I could extract there. Oh, I kind of want to go down here and clear some stuff out, though. I feel like this has been a particularly cautious uh, run for me. Uh, which is, I guess, uh, beneficial to trying to talk about everything <laughs> this game has to offer. So these are the traps I was talking about. I don't actually want to disturb them. Like, you could shoot them and they'll just go off, but doing that, I think, pisses off the witch. So, uh, let's just avoid them, you know? We'll just kind of sneak on by. Alright, another locked chest. We could open it, but... A little bit of frame rate lag there. Okay, you know what we're going to do? We're going to open it and we're going to send it. We're going to send it. Um, some minor spoilers here. If you're interested in like playing this game entirely blind, I would not I would not uh, continue watching at this point because we're going to go fight the mini boss in this area. But I imagine if you're here, you're not too worried about that. I'm going to kill these guys because I do want to get my hands... Okay, now we're going to go. <gasps> Truly a leap of faith! Such a cool, such a cool way of doing this boss arena, by the way, having you actually jump into it like this. I want to get close and stagger quickly. I should have had my revolver out, but I didn't, especially because we have two charge shots. Really want to watch that attack. It's pretty forgiving dodging that attack, to be honest, but it doesn't mean you don't have to be careful because it is very fast. And if you're not ready for it, bad things will happen. Oh, like that. It's okay, we got a heal. I'm going to use it. We don't want to stay close to this guy at all. He will start to unleash some pretty nasty melee combos on us. The nice thing, though, is if we catch that early, we can actually stagger him in it, which is beneficial to us. I'm going to go ahead and spawn our bell here. We're going to get out of the way of that. And we're going to use the chance to clear up some of these nerds. These guys are all pretty weak, as long as we can actually hit them, which I'm failing to do. Uh, my biggest concern here is that I've drained my stamina by jumping like a total noob. You see that? We have that visual indicator, and it's incredibly useful. The game isn't trying to have like insanely tight dodge windows, at least not with this enemy type. I don't know if maybe they get more brutal as time goes on. Um, so it feels nice to be able to just kind of like pay decent attention, you know? Uh, it can catch you off guard, you can be overwhelmed, but at the same time, I... Yeah. Ammo management is so important. Oh, I didn't realize that triggering my any magic actually also triggers that again. That's actually really cool. I'm trying to just kind of stay on this guy. Ooh, but yeah, that was a bad play on my part. Fortunately, we picked up another healing uh, pot at some point. I'm going to go ahead and use that just to stay up on heals. We're going to go ahead and pop some magic here. There's a lot of visual effects work in this game to sort of disorient you that I think people are going to be kind of one way or the other on. Uh, I kind of like the idea that if you're really not cautious with your stamina usage, like, it's bad. Uh, you know, your character just doesn't do well with their stamina. Uh, that was a really bad call on my part. I'm gonna get all my guns reloaded here. I'd like to go ahead and accuse my light spell in a second here. We can stagger this guy, and that opens up a ton of damage. But obviously, not an easy thing to do. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get some shots off here. There we go. Now my aim is starting to warm up. It only took, you know, the first 25 minutes of this run. Oh, it feels so good once you do. It genuinely does. 
Uh, I am out of healing. It's kind of unfortunate. Oh, yeah, that was... I've, I messed that up. Oh, it's a healing. It's a healing. Incredible. RNG at our side. Uh, stagger, stagger, stagger. Just out of range here. Uh, one of the big things to note, by the way, if you're wondering, like, well, how do I... Oh, he does pick up the shield. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. That's bad, folks. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like any of this. I am being poisoned. Um... <laughs> well, then. <laughs> it's time to go show you all the Hermitorium. <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> well, the good news is uh, we had that perk, right? So I don't think we lose any witch fire. Um... I don't actually know how that works. I guess we'll find out. Um, we did pick up a few crystals along the way. <laughs> uh, okay, let's head out. This game is just full of surprises. Um, that's the farthest I've gotten on that boss. I've kind of just been choosing to go level up. Okay, we got to keep all of our witch fire. That's awesome. We can go do a level up. That was a really useful run. Normally, I honestly wouldn't have went to the boss with that much witch fire because if we lose, then we lose the witch fire. It's like... I don't really know if it spawns outside the boss's door, if it's in there. I think it's in there. So that would have kind of been like a, that's gone. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the Ascension Shrine. You can see we've got Vitality, Healing, Endurance, Witchery, Metonia, uh, sorry, Metanoa, 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 Metanoia, Metanoia. That would probably be it. Metanoia, uh, which is uh, the amount of witch fire we can absorb from kills. Uh, I've already got up to 7%. You can also see we've got luck, which influences things like the quality and quantity of the items, as well as the frequency of calamities, which are the bad thing I was talking about. Uh, I've been kind of like focusing into witchery because I actually really like the magic in this game. I just think it pairs well with the combat. Uh, and I don't know, I just enjoy it. But we can obviously spec some more into endurance here to modify our uh, base stamina as well as our stamina regen speed and our dash length, which, you know, is beneficial for a lot of different reasons. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead though, I think, and push to the full 10% on recharge speed. Um, you can see now it says, new event is now unveiled. So as you're leveling up your character here, which, uh, you know, allows you to progress these, these different uh, stats, you're also like changing the world uh, and adding more enemies and influencing things. I wanna just double check and see what kind of crystals we've got here. I don't think we have enough to Sorry, Witchfire Chunks. Crystallized Witchfire. Um, yeah, we don't have enough. It's not worth spending it. The nice thing about getting Chunks, obviously, is much like uh, if you had, like, a you know, a, a fragment of a soul in Dark Souls or whatever. Uh, you you just get to keep those in your inventory. They're bound to you. You're not going to lose them. So you can stock up on those and kind of passively level up. It is unfortunate because I'm going to be sitting on 4,800 <laughs> uh, and not really able to do anything with it. But that's okay. Um, it looks like we, I think, leveled up our spell there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the mirror and claim some goodies here. So we're going to claim a close range weapon. We finally got a shotgun. I'm very excited. I was looking, I was hoping to get one of these. Pellets and certain enemies explode after a short while, setting them on fire, gains extra power uh, when fired while sliding. Dude, the destiny inspiration in all the best ways. I love it. Uh, we also got our third Mysterium Incantation. I was researching this because this is going to allow us to get our third Mysterium on one of our weapons. You need to research one of those incantations every time it is required to level up a weapon, um, which is cool. I don't think I can have... Okay, so this is for my demonic weapon slot. So if we go this route, we have to decide to drop off the hunger or drop off the all-seeing eye uh, in favor of the shotgun. I think for now I'm going to try the shotgun... And we will drop off the hunger. Um, you can see here we can unveil our Mysterium for our bell, which I'm kind of interested in. It's going to give us a new unknown power, and we're also going to increase the shockwave range to 35. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, a 10-second duration. Okay, that's pretty cool. Oh, and then it keeps going up 20 seconds, and then we get another power. 40 meters. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Um... Yeah, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> uh, this one actually does damage now, too. We already got the first one up on that, which is pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool, if you ask me. All right. Let's sh check out the shotgun real quick. Oh, that's a good sounding shotgun. 
All right, awesome. Um, man, yeah, that kind of covers the basics of the hub. We also have our uh, our potions brewer down here, so uh, we need herbs, um, and we can use those herbs to make to make healing potions. Uh, simple as that. I, I imagine this is you know maybe something that will expand in the future. But right now, it's pretty simple, which I kind of like. Uh, you just go ahead and get the Angelica, which you can find out in the world, and you turn it into potions. It's kind of the nice thing about this game having like this extraction element, right? Is it's not like a roguelike in a way where you have to like die uh, or defeat the thing to finish the run, right? You could just go and farm resources, get some, uh, you know, get some uh, some witch fire, and then come out and level up and do your thing, and you know, in a very soulsy way. To be honest, uh, it's a very common thing to do in in a Souls game is you know between bonfires, go and farm those resources and head back out. So if you're familiar with that sort of gameplay loop, that's uh, very much what you're getting here. Also, we should start more research. Uh, no reason, I guess, that I've seen so far to just leave research hanging, so I definitely don't want to do that. I think it's time that I finally... We could also get a magical item, too. This is, there's still so many choices. <laughs> uh, I feel like it would be cool to get a third weapon. We're, we're sitting on a decent amount of demonic ammo, so I guess I'll go ahead and throw that on there. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and grab a second Mysterium Arcana, because uh, I'm already getting to that point where I'm going to need it for some other stuff. And, uh, yeah, that about covers it, folks. Um, I hope I talked about all the things I wanted to. Again, this game's like a lot more than meets the eye. There's a lot of cool stuff here. If you like the idea of sort of a run-based uh, first-person shooter like this, uh, this is this is it, man. This game's doing some really cool stuff. I'm very excited to see how it grows over the next year. But what's already here is deeply satisfying to play. I really enjoy the gunplay. It definitely has that Destiny inspiration in like all the right ways when it comes to the gunplay. And I just think it's uh, executed very well here in Early Access. This feels like a really good polished Early Access entry. I haven't had a ton of performance issues. It just runs great. It plays great. There's a satisfying loop to dive into here. The game can get extremely stressful at times, uh, especially when those calamities hit. And I just it's one of those games I think is like hard to watch because I have like knowledge of the game now right so it, I'm making things maybe look a little easier but when you first play the game the discoveries that you're going to have uh, <laughs> are, uh, are inevitably going to lead to your death a bunch of times that's kind of fun that's the fun of it right is uh, you know learning where the challenge in the game is and how to engage it how to avoid it when necessary just a lot of fun. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to check it out over on Epic. Again, if you just want to wait for the early access to wrap up, I imagine it'll be coming to Steam after uh, it launches into its 1.0 state, so you can keep an eye out for that. But hey, thanks for hanging out to me today. Uh, thanks for hanging out to me today. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this little look at Witchfire, and I'll see you folks around. Take care.